What's going on guys? It's your boy Leroy and thank you for again for watching fieldcoaching.com. Just like DJ Khaled guys, we got you another one. The 2020 Hyundai Kona. We got it, we're gonna take a quick look at it for a quick spin. We are at the Upper Deck Ortigas, so let's get it on. Under the hood of the 2020 Hyundai Kona is a, whoa, it's a two liter DOHC four cylinder 16 valve engine. How do I know it's DOHC? It says it right here. A DOHC 16 valve engine gives it six, 149 horsepower and 179 Newton meters of torque. Wow, that, should, that sounds kind of low for a two liter, but we're gonna find out. It's an Atkinson cycle engine, which means it may be low on power, but it's gonna give you a lot of fuel mileage. We're gonna find out later on. So let's take a look at the funky styling of the 2020 Hyundai Kona. Oh, damn, look at this. This is kind of hype. I mean, take a look at this large hexagonal grill right here. It's definitely kind of lit. And uh, hey, if you check this thing out right here, you need to think that these are the headlamps. They're kind of thin, but no, boys and girls. These are the DRLs, or the daytime running lamps. Hyundai calls this Fluidics Culture 2.0, but I call this Predator X Catfish. I mean, take a quick look. It's got a large gaping mouth right there, but uh, I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's actually kind of cool. You can see the headlamps right here. The headlamps are below the daytime running lamps. They're uh, projector type headlamps with halogens there, and fake air inserts right here, and your fog lamps. Your fog lamps are way below right here. It's kind of a funky look, but I gotta say, really works. Want to change your current stock mags to aftermarket mags? Hyundai's got you covered because you don't have to. We've got 17 inch mags right here with 215 55R17 tires. Uh, offers a great grip. It's a multi-spoke uh, alloy wheel, so um, it's, uh, it's actually not my taste, but it kind of works with the whole interior as well. Overall, it gives you this black plastic cladding right here that gives it a more rugged look. It wraps around the front and moves away all the back and then continuing right along the side skirts then to the back arches. The wheel arches, they look really big. They're kind of bulging right here in the front and at the back. But I think they're, they're sized just right. If you, if you um, uh, size it a little, bit, a little bigger than this, I think it's gonna look like a dune buggy and you don't want that. It's got this long swooping character line right here that arches from the front arch to the rear tail lamp. And uh, you can see that it actually looks kind of plain right here without any cladding, but you won't actually need that because you got that black plastic cladding right below. It adds to this macho, rugged look. Hey, at least it's in the 20th century with these grab handles for door handles, blacked out B pillars, and hey, you got turn lamp indicators. Turn light indicators, come on. That's actually a nice touch, Hyundai. Black and plastic seems to be the central theme of the Hyundai Kona, but uh, I gotta say, like I've been saying earlier, a lot of times earlier, it really works with this car. You see the C pillar right here? Instead of having uh, bland colors or uh, body panels, it has this black plastic cladding here that connects the rear spoiler to the rear hatch, and just like the front, it's got body cladding. I've been saying cladding a lot today, but uh, it's got a lot of it, I swear. The black cladding from the side, it hugs right over to the rear. Now speaking of that rear, come on, take a look at this. If you think the front is funky, the back is, the back definitely got something on its own. This thin LED tail lamps right here. You've got the, your turn signals way down here, which is uh, separate from the tail lamps, which is definitely something different for Hyundai. It's got your reverse lights right here, and this rear plastic, again, plastic diffuser. Looking at it, uh, I, I'm not really a fan of that black diffuser right there. I hope that they should have made it something different. Maybe a future refresh will make things better, but uh, as of right now, I'm kind of iffy about that. 
Me and the boys were confident enough that the Hyundai Kona would have enough rear cargo space for all our camera equipment and knickknacks. Let's take a look how we did. Kind of nervous. Hell, oh, wow. It actually fit all our camera equipment, our bags, our tripods, and this large uh, high fire lit bag right here. But um, hey, there's got room for more. I'm sure that a week's worth of groceries for a large family can actually fit back here. And if you notice, these seats actually fold down flat. So if, you, if these fold down flat, you can actually increase your cargo space I mean, a lot more. So um, in terms of space, the Hyundai Kona is definitely a winner right here. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. How, how are ya? We're taking a look at the inside of the Hyundai Kona. Hey, it's not a bad place to be in. Black seems to be the color of the day right here. And uh, although it is hard plastics everywhere, oh, except for this felt lining on the door, it's pretty well built together. I mean, there's no, nothing loose, nothing seems to be out of place. And the seats, oh my goodness, the seats. Uh, for my large frame, the seats are actually kind of nice and just supportive for, uh, for aggressive driving, if you know what I mean. Uh, the steering wheel is nicely weighted, although I actually I think I recognize the steering wheel. It's similar to that of the uh, Hyundai Veloster, which is kind of sick if you're going to think about it. It uh, inspires you to do some spirited driving, definitely. The aircon vents are uh, nicely, de nicely detailed. Uh, the design is definitely futuristic and modern. You got some circular air vents on the sides. Uh, you have what Hyundai calls a floating radio unit. Wow, a floating radio unit. It's not a touch screen, unfortunately, but it's quite intuitive. I gotta tell you, Hyundai has their interior game going on. These seats are really supportive, they're well padded, and it actually reclines. It's a manual adjustment, so, uh, so it doesn't have any of that electronic doodads. But check this out the steering wheel. It's both adjustable for reach and brake. So looking for the proper driving position for you should not be a problem. I can't say enough good things about the inside of the Kona. The shifter's nicely weighted. It looks like a manual transmission, if I have to be honest. Cubby holes everywhere. A nice center console for you to, um, you know, actually like an armrest. And it is symmetrical with the other side. So if you want to rest, it should be fine. Hyundai, your interior game is awesome. Checking out the, uh, starting up the uh, Hyundai uh, Kona, just, it has a push button start. So where's the key? Oh, the key's with me, it's right here. It's with me, trust me, it's, with, <laughs> it's in one of my pockets. So all you have to do is just to press the brake pedal, then hit start. And it starts. And then we can finally turn on the aircon. All right, such a hot day. Everything's to be in place, oh wow. Look at those gauges. Gauges are really, uh, really great. They have a black theme with a white motif right there. Looks really sporty. It's got an information display on the middle. This shows you your speed. You can uh, change it right here. You can check your speed, check your speed, check your fuel economy, and your uh, more, more other stuff right here. There's definitely a lot of stuff. You got your temperature gauge, your fuel gauge. Not a lot of cars have these these days anymore. Hyundai, you're, you're amazing. Oh, wow. But what about the rear passengers? Stepping inside the rear of the Hyundai Kona, I know people call this a subcompact crossover, but there's nothing subcompact about this. I mean, look at all that headroom. I'm actually sitting behind my driving position right now, so... Uh, even if, uh, it is, if there's a 5, 10 and a half driver sitting right up front, shouldn't be a problem. Just look at all of this knee room. Wow. And my feet can move around freely right here. Even if I sit in the middle. Huh. I, think I, I think I can live here for a few hours. So that shouldn't be a problem. And get, check this out. It's got an armrest with more cubby holes right here. So if you want to go executive mode, that's not a problem. Uh, I can actually stay just right here. Just close the door, please. Close the door. What it lacks in horsepower and torque, it definitely makes up for it at the pump, like I said. 
Ano ba yan? Traffic na naman! Traffic! Woo! Even though you're stuck in traffic, uh, the seats are pretty supportive. It can actually fit my big ass, big ass right here. It's well padded and it's well bolstered. So you're not, your, your body's not trying to grab, uh, grab traction whenever you're trying to uh, sit down comfortably. It's very comfortable and it's four way adjustable. It moves up like so, okay. And move down, move forward and back. Fortunately, it doesn't have electronic adjustments. You get to pull this lever right here for it to get adjusted. So even though it says 149 and 179 on paper, I think the power mapping or the way Hyundai engineered the engine for all the power to be made available right below the rev range, really good. Oh, I forgot. I think I should put this on sport mode so that once you put it on sport mode, the throttle response would be really good. I mean, there's gonna be less lag in the accelerator and the steering wheel got a little bit heavy. Maybe it's just me, but, oh. Maybe it's just me, but uh, I can really feel the, the reps hold longer. You want to go for spirited driving light traffic of course within the speed limit you could do that with a hyundai kona the suspension is more of the, on the firm side it has um independent mcpherson struts up front and a torsion beam at the back you don't really need independent suspension for this type of car because it's, it's really pretty much like a hatchback it doesn't have any overhangs at the back so um, I don't think that's necessary. The steering's really light, and uh, it, the suspension absorbs all the bumps real good, even on imperfect roads. Um, yeah, you can still barely feel it uh, if you get it. Instead of hearing those bumps, you get some. <coughs> oh, <don't. laughs> oh, hey, 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 hey! <laughs> We're reviewing here! Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you hear some bumps from the back because of the cold aircon. Speaking of the aircon, I have my gripes about the air conditioning. On a hot summer's day, the aircon is a bit soft, but a bit. Um, a bit weak, I have to say. It doesn't get that cold, that uh, that cold quickly enough to cover the entire car. The crew at the back is actually complaining uh, quite a bit, saying that um, it's quite warm in the back in the rear passenger seats. I I, I can attest to that because I, I I actually sat in the back earlier, feel for myself, and yeah, the aircon's kind of weak. I don't know. But if you really want to get air on and nothing else, if you want to drive a crappy car, if you want to drive an expensive, crappy, ugly looking car, maybe you can get a Nissan and then you can get real cold air con. But, <laughs> what? But if you want to have a solid, balanced car with, and you don't care about the air conditioning that much, or you can deal with it, you can live with it, you got the Hyundai Kona. Wait, do you hate Nissan? No, I'm a big fan of Nissan. Yeah. I just think that no they... No hate, just love. No, I, that's how much I love Nissan. I want them to succeed. <laughs> Nissan, baka naman. Nissan, baka naman. Prove us wrong, Nissan. Nissan. Prove us wrong. Skyline naman dyan. Nissan. Nissan. Mag-release naman kayo X S16. So we've seen the 2020 Hyundai Kona inside and out. We've seen how it drives. Now let's give it a Phil Kocha grade. For practicality, the 2020 Hyundai Kona is definitely a winner. It may look a little small from the, from the outside, but on the inside, trust me, it's a lot of room in there. In fact, all our camera gear can fit in the back, even with the seats folded up. But if you need more space, just fold it flat down, and you'll be good to go. So for practicality, we're giving it a four. 
out of five. For aesthetics, come on, look at this thing, come on. You're gonna ask me about aesthetics? It's lime green colored, black cladding on the side, DRL at the top, projector. Come on guys, what more do you want? It definitely does not look like a Nissan Juke, I'm gonna tell you. We're gonna give this a five out of five. When it comes to performance, the Hyundai Kona, yeah, sure, it has 149 horsepower, 179 newton meters of torque, but when you're in the driver's seat, my butt dyno definitely does not feel that way. Plus, you get eight to nine kilometers per liter in the city, 14 kilometers per liter on the highway, so you get to save more in the pumps. So for performance, I'm definitely gonna give it a five out of five. For value for money, the Hyundai Kona costs 1,180,000 for the GLS gas model with a six-speed automatic. It may sound kind of daunting, but if you compare it to the Honda HRV, the Mazda CX-3, its main competitors, it definitely undercuts all of them. You get more for what you pay for. It may be more expensive than the MG ZS and the upcoming Geely Cool Ray, but you get a Hyundai Kona for all of that. So for value for money, we're gonna give it a four out of five. So what's it gonna be? What's gonna be the field coach score for the 2020 Hyundai Kona? What do you have to look forward to? Well, the Hyundai Kona is the answer to all your subcompact crossover needs. It might look like it's copying some sort of thing from Nissan right now. Yeah, that's no juke. But hey, at least you're gonna get all that for so much less than that, plus it looks so much better. So, the Phil Coach's score will definitely be a four out of five. Let's face it, crossovers are here to stay. No matter how much we love sedans, no matter how much we love small hatchbacks, families always come first. And what do families need? Families need a lot of space. So hatchbacks, they definitely won't cut it. Hyundai answered that question of what is the best subcompact crossover and then with the 2020 Hyundai Kona. This definitely gets my grade. Personally, if I'm gonna get a subcompact crossover, I'm gonna get a Hyundai Kona. So why don't you go ahead, go to philcauchy.com, hit the search button, look for all our used and new Hyundai Konas right there. I'm sure you're gonna get the cheapest ones. You're gonna get that from our most trusted dealers, only from philcauchy.com. Thank you for watching again. Thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you are alerted whenever we upload a new video. Once again, it's your boy, Leroy. Peace.